Lord to God, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. Bless the Sunday school lesson that it may be food for our lives, it may be rich, God, it may have touched somebody's heart and soul. God, we honor you and we thank you for this opportunity. We just thank you for all you've done. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. So uh, we're going to start the Sunday school lesson. This is our Sunday school lesson for November the 1st. Um, which we know this is Halloween today, but we want to thank God for Sunday school on tomorrow. Um, this lesson, the title of this lesson is Upside Down Love. Um, the scriptures that this lesson is coming from is John 13, 1 through 35. And as you know, that's a whole lot of material. Uh, so I tried to condense all of this, and I know they don't normally go from that much, but there was so much in this, I kind of started from verse one. Um, the background um, key verse to this is um, actually John 13, 15, when it says, for I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. That's the key verse. Um, jumping right into this, um, by this time, when they start in the 13th verse, by this time, Jesus knew that he had to accelerate his teaching to the disciples. Um, the time had come to put up or shut up, uh, get it or don't. There was no more time for talking. It was time to get to walking. It was hands on time. Jesus understood this. By this time, by the time they got to this verse, um, Jesus knew that his life wasn't going to last long, that his time had can't come to, to go with the Father. By this time, Jesus had started looking through the disciples. He wasn't looking at them anymore. He was looking through them. Jesus was seeing his Father's throne and himself exalted upon it. I want you to think about this. Jesus knowing first that he was about to be betrayed by someone close to him, and second, that he had to die. It's kind of a tough time, but Jesus understood that I got to get some things done right now. But knowing all of this, the time he still had to show what true love was all about. So this scripture, going into this 13th verse, kind of is the backdrop to when Jesus met with the disciples and they um, was eating, was having a feast. Um, Jesus most definitely was upside down in his love. Um, verse one, it was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and to go to his father. The evening meal was being served. And I'm on number two already. Number three, Jesus knew that the father had put all things under his power. It lets us know Jesus knew who he was and who he belonged to. Verse four, so in the midst of the meal, Jesus gets up, takes off his outer garments, and wraps a towel around his waist. I'm sure at this time and at this point, everybody was wondering what in the world is Jesus doing? And I think I would have been in that same boat trying to figure out, well, why, why did Jesus get up and start taking clothes off and wrapping towels around his waist. Uh, verse five, he, he pours water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around his waist. When he came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, and, I, and I'm sure Peter's still trying to figure out at this moment, what in the world is Jesus doing? So he says, to, uh, when he gets to Simon Peter, with some sarcasm and embarrassment, Lord, what are you doing? You going to wash my feet too? I'm sure a lot was going on through Peter's mind, questions after questions, and I know it would have been mine too. Why in the world are you down here washing our feet? That's, that's a servant's job. You know, all this stuff is going through Peter's mind. What are you trying to prove? if you want to kind of put it in our language and how we think. What are you trying to prove? Jesus replied in verse seven, you don't realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. 
Now, Peter kind of kind of breaks on him a little bit. He said, no, sir, no, sir. Said Peter, you are not going to wash my feet. <laughs> mm. Now, this is some tough words coming from Peter. In other words, telling Jesus that this act is beneath him. Jesus, you are embarrassing me. You're not going to wash my feet. But Jesus answered him, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. This is a very powerful statement and holds true today. If you don't let Jesus wash you, you will have no part with him. With this statement, Jesus accomplished a few things. First thing he did, he killed Peter's pride and he killed it with service. With service. Um, Peter really didn't know what to say after that point because that right there was kind of one of them I'll hit you in the mouth kind of statements. But by verse nine, Peter started backtracking a little bit and trying to be clever in his words because he knew Jesus was kind of hitting him in the mouth. Um, but at this point, Jesus wasn't playing no games. Jesus wasn't dealing with him in the flesh, but talking to him in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Still trying to be clever. Peter goes on to say, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. You gonna go wash all of me? Jesus answered him again, verse 10. A person who had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean and you are clean. Then Jesus dropped a bomb in the room. He says, no, not every one of you. Now, can you imagine Jesus washing feet and talking to them and, and being spiritual? Then all of a sudden, he breaks this news to them that, yeah, you clean, but not every last one of you all. Mm -hmm. That takes me back to verse two. And if you read the scripture, if you were in verse two, Jesus knew the devil had already prompted Judas to portray him. Mm -hmm. So he already knew it in the midst of washing their feet that the devil had already got into Judas. It's amazing how Jesus was teaching, but also letting one of them know, I see you all at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's a real strange position to be in. But what a humble act of love not only to get down and wash another man's feet, which I would have a problem with, mm. but to also wash a man's feet that he knew without a doubt has set him up to die. How y'all feel about that? Amen. <laughs> Let's take a minute and look at the contrast between Jesus and Judas. Set against the backdrop of Judas' hatred Jesus showed restraint and humility, which made his love shine even brighter. Mm -mm -mm. Amen. Let's look at the multitude of Judah's hatred. But before I even go there, do anybody have anything to say up until this point? Before we talk about Judah's hatred? Mm. You know, I want to talk. Um, good morning, y'all. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. thinking about the... Um, the contrast of what you what you're saying about serving someone when you know someone is is setting you up and i thought about the title the upside down love you know i did mortgages for southern national which is now bbnt for about eight years and we used to say that a person is upside down in their mortgage and when we say that, we mean that they've uh, they got more in it than it's really worth. Mm -hmm. So when they talk about Jesus and this upside down love, mm -hmm. <laughs> he's got more in it. All mm -hmm. right, yeah. he's got more in it than mm -hmm. than he uh, than the person that's in it that deserves. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was being the example. He's, he he said, "This this is the humility that I need from you." 
if you're going to be my servant. This is what I need for you to do. I serve when it hurts. Mm -hmm. Serve when you know you've been betrayed. Serve mm -hmm. when you know you serve somebody that won't serve you. Serve when you know you serve somebody that's got a dagger in your heart, your back, your side, and, and thorns on your head that's got it all over. Serve mm -hmm. them anyway. Serve them anyway. Because this is how you have become one of my disciples. Mm -hmm. I'm showing you. And, and the, that's why we always use the phrase, there's nothing new under the sun. Honey, you ain't doing nothing Jesus had done. You're not enduring anything that Jesus has not already endured for you. So mm -hmm. just, just grow through it, pray through it, and get through it. Because mm -hmm. Jesus already endured it. Already knew, already endured it. Amen. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. So so we're going to look at it, and you're exactly right, Sister Cheeks. Exactly right. They already endured it. They already endured it. Let's look at the multitude, the magnitude, I'm sorry, of Judah's hatred. Only the devil himself can plant that kind of darkness in somebody's heart. This darkness walk with the light day and night. All of the teaching and uplifting souls of others just seem to drive Judas further and further, deeper and deeper to darkness. Mm -hmm. When Jesus talked about love, it must have been like shackles and knives to Judas. Mm -hmm. Jealousy, spite, greed grew so deep that at this point, he was ready to destroy Christ at any means necessary. But in spite of all of this, and this kind of go back to what Sister Cheek said, in spite of all of this, and what all Jesus knew, he still kneeled at the feet of Judas mm -hmm. and washed his feet. And washed his feet, sure did. Mm, talking about upside down love. Mm. Hey. Um, and speaking of what Sister she said, you know, I'm in the car business, and that's one of the things we talk about on, on even car notes. You know, you upside down in your car note. You know, you you owe more for this car than this car is worth, so uh, you might want to keep on making some payments until you can kind of get yourself in line to where it's worth trading this vehicle. So it's the exact same thing. When he finished, he put on his clothes, returned to his seat when Jesus finished, Return to his seat and ask, do you understand what I have done? He goes on to tell them through 13 through 15, I have set, and this is our key verse, I have set you an example. Jesus became one of the lowest positions during that time in society, a servant. He said, do you understand the example that I gave you? He said, you should do as I have done for you. And I don't know if we know the magnitude of what a servant was back then, but boy, that was pretty low for Jesus to get down there and wash their feet. That made them feel some kind of way. No servant is greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. And, you know, sometimes I'll be looking at these stripped scriptures and I'm going to have to keep it moving because I got quite a bit to go through. But um, sometimes when you listen to how Jesus speak and the things he say, um, and, and I understand that we kind of know what he's talking about. But probably back then, a lot of things that Jesus said to them, they didn't quite comprehend because the act hadn't been ha hadn't happened yet. Right. They was trying to figure out what in the world Jesus would be talking about when he be saying all this stuff about, you know, a messenger ain't no greater and a master. And I know they was trying to figure it out. It's easy for us to translate it because we can see the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. But these fellas live through all of this. Jesus was showing them and us that serving with love is one of the most important attributes of God. Anybody got anything at this point? Yeah. Yeah, I would just like to say, yeah, here uh, Jesus had did a lot of teaching with the disciples, talking to them. But like you said, this particular time, he put hands on, he demonstrated what mm -hmm. he was talking about, the lesson he wanted them to get. Because I had read where Jewish servants uh, didn't wash their master's feet. 
They didn't, mm -hmm. they, they never did that because that was considered a menial task. But yet Jesus did it. Mm -hmm. And he did it. Uh, uh, and, and it had said, I think in verse three, that Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and he went, he's going to go back to God. But here he knew this. He had all how he had all, he, he had all things in his hand, but yet he washed their feet. Mm -hmm. And he was Christ, but yet he did it. He was the mm -hmm. Lord and Master, yet he served his followers. And it's just letting us know that we got to have some humility, some selflessness, and have to be able to do some servanthood. He served mm -hmm. his disciples because of his humility and because of his love. So, and it takes humility and grace to serve others, but it mm -hmm. also takes, uh, takes humility and grace to, uh, to uh, receive from others. Amen. Yeah. And I'll say this, Brother Jonathan, before you go, is mm -hmm. that I think <clears throat> in this moment that the love that Jesus had um, surpassed the hate that Judas had for him. Because exactly. um, I'm like you, I don't know if I could sit there and wash his feet <laughs> knowing that he hate me and he's ready to get rid of me, um, you know, especially after all Christ had done for him. Mm -hmm. and leading him there but he showed us great humility that showed us that you know in this thing called ministry which is a a, a lifetime of service that mm -hmm. we cannot pick and choose how and who we're going to serve but we must serve them you know as if they've done nothing to us mm -hmm. and um you know being in, in ministry for over it's going to be 21 years now it's hard sometimes to have to minister to people who you know got a dagger in your back Mm -hmm. who you know are killing you but mm -hmm. for the sake of the call of, of ministry and just that because i think what we fail to realize is before god called us to preach teach all this other stuff we do he called us first to service mm -hmm. he called us to serve mm -hmm. and so for the sake of service we have to put our feelings aside and just be like lord okay whatever your will is let it be done but it's hard i'm not gonna That's tell good. you no lie I'll, I'll be the first to tell you it's hard to bite your tongue and it's hard to smile and still pray for people and bless people who you know uh, really hate you. But I think that's where that scripture comes into play, that love conquers a multitude of sin. If you want to confuse the devil, you got to show him some love. Yes, and yes, I think yes. at that point, Judas is like, I don't, I don't understand this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus was telling you, and you're right, Pastor, that, that, that's a hard one to know that somebody tried to get you and you're going to turn around and have to wash their feet, mm. you know? I might hand him a piece of candy or something, but uh, <laughs> I think get down there and wash their feet. That is, boy, that's, that's getting on down there. But Jesus was telling them that this is what God himself is like. Mm. He washes feet. Even the feet of the ones who turn their back on him. Mm -hmm. Boy, now that right there is kind of deep. Because all, all of us have done stuff that was not pleasing in the Father's eye. That's and he right. turned right around and washed our feet and told us to keep on moving, keep on going, and I love you anyway. So that right there was, was a deep one. But verse 18, then Jesus speaks again. I'm not referring to all of them. He drops another bomb in the room. I know those who I've chosen and whom share my bread has lifted up his heels against me. Mm. At this point, Mary's baby was speaking. The man, Jesus, the one that was, was in the flesh was speaking a little bit at this point because the word goes on in 21 to say, he was troubled in spirit and said, one of you are going to betray me. So he couldn't hold that thing no longer. He had to go ahead and let it be known. One of y'all getting ready to betray me, not, not internally, but externally. His disciples, and this is the 22nd, were shocked and looking around at each other, trying to figure out which one of us is going to do what he said we're going to do. Peter looks at another one and motions, you know, kind of like, ask him, ask him, ask him, who is it? But Peter wanted to know. Then Peter couldn't even, couldn't even wait for the person to act. He reaches over there and says, which one? You know, Peter was kind of outspoken. <laughs> so he, he wanted to know which one. Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread. When I have dipped 
dipped in the dish. Jesus dipped and gave it to Judas. Now, this is a point that God kind of laid on my heart that was kind of interesting to me. And I had to say this like Pastor Williams would normally say, this is the shout. You know, that's, that's how he tell us on Sunday morning, that this is the shout. Jesus dipped the bread, representing himself, in the water, representing baptism, and then gave himself right to the devil. Telling him that no matter what you do, you can't take my life. I have to give it up. Mm -hmm. So even in the midst of giving him that bread, he was giving an example of what this is going to be like. This is what this is going to be like. At this point, Judas knew, Jesus knew it was him. Jesus said to Judas, do what you are about to do and do it quickly. That's right. Judas left mad and full of the devil. Here yeah. it is. Twice in these verses, verse 2 and verse 27, Satan, Satan enters into Judas. Think about this today, how we allow Satan to enter into our homes, our churches, our jobs, our children, and allow him to abide. I'm telling you, we should not allow Satan to abide and to use us at will. Don't be on call for the devil. Don't be his puppet or even his side piece. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't yes, sir. That's good. Hey, don't let the devil jump in and out of you every chance he get. Anybody got anything to say before I keep moving? I I I, I, I try not to say nothing, but I think we miss um, when when he allows the devil to enter. He's really rejecting because if you do study and study well, we find out that when you offer people food back then, that was a sign of friendship. So when Jesus did that, when he offered him that bread, that was it. That was his last chance at grace and mercy. God was extended. Jesus was extending to him. Look here. I'm trying to trying to be your friend. I'm trying to let you in. But he rejected him. You know, and see, I think a lot of times we, we fail to realize that, you know, we go to worship and we go to praise and we go to, you know, we show up for that corporate setting. But I believe sometimes we realize we miss the fact that God is extending us his hand in friendship. One more time, he's trying to give us another opportunity yeah. mm -hmm. uh, to get this thing right. And like you said, you know, I like that. I, I'm about to use that again, so you're gonna hear it again. <laughs> you know, he had he had the devil on call, so that guess what? He was on standby. There was the side chick. So you know, when you got the main, he's sitting there with the main piece right there, but he got the side exactly. chick with him. Exactly. So when he rejected the main, yes, he just yes. turned and looked at the side piece, and the side piece <laughs> said, "Oh, this is my cue right here." Because when you feel like you ain't getting what you need from the main, you turn mm -hmm. to the side. And that's what he did. And he, he failed the test right there. He failed mm -hmm. at his last chance at freedom. Mm -hmm. And it behooves mm -hmm. us today to make sure that when Jesus extends the hand, that we mm -hmm. accept it. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Because mm -hmm. I'm telling you, we and I think we fail to realize that God will bless us uh, even when we mm -hmm. don't deserve it. Judas didn't deserve the hand that God was giving, that Jesus was giving him in that moment. In my opinion, that's just me. He did, he did. What he deserved was to get kicked out of the room and away from the table. Exactly. But God has so much love and grace there. That's right. So I'm done. I'm all, I done got caught up. I'm sorry. That's all right. You preach. You preach. I want to say too, sister teacher, that was, that was the second time I heard that. Don't let the devil be, don't be the devil's side piece. That's mm -hmm. good stuff. Um, but you know, I was thinking about uh the example. You just put spit all over my face. The example where um Jesus dipped in and the uh the pastor has said it. All the things in this lesson were very when you study it they're very distinctive mm. they had a lot of meaning what exactly. jesus was doing had a whole lot of meaning mm -hmm. and and it took a whole lot of humility mm -hmm. to do it because of what the things meant mm. offering him food that had a whole lot of meaning having that uh mm. supper with those i mean washing those and feet of disciples yeah. 
those things those things had real distinctive meaning yeah. and it took mm -hmm. humility to do it and i thought back real quickly till um a couple months ago uh there was a person and if i said the name y'all know who it was so i'm saying that was sick in the hospital and uh the person had did a whole lot of stuff to me to try to kill my character everything but I was praying for this person. I was sincerely praying and interceding for God to heal this person. And I really meant that. But while I was praying for this person, the Holy Spirit <laughs> told me to go and lay hands on the person and they'll recover. I said, Lord, I, why can't I just pray for them? And because you know, I was making all kinds of excuses. God, you know, with my system, I can't go in the hospital. I can't, you know, I can't do this because I get sick. I, I do this, Lord. I can't, I can't. But before I got off my knees, when I tell you I cried, I, I mean, I cried a river before yeah. I got up off of my knees mm -hmm. because I knew I was going to surrender and do what God told me to do. Mm -hmm. And because I follow God's instructions, because God is real and he means and he'll do what he says, mm -hmm. I went and did what God said and they recovered. Mm -hmm. They recover quickly because mm -hmm. of the obedience that we have for God. See, see, it takes, I'm, I'm like Pastor the rest of y'all, I'm telling you, it takes God to really deal with your heart mm -hmm. for you to have the kind of humility he had in this lesson. Mm -hmm. You, you got to mm -hmm. really let him deal with your heart because that old stinking heart we got, God, God has to get in there. He has to take control. Not be the side piece, but he got to be the main man. <laughs> That's it. So that you can follow his instructions. Amen. Yeah. That's why Amen. Paul said you have to die to that flesh daily. Amen. That's it. Die to the flesh daily. Because if we don't, you're right. That man will come out and we'll forget all about the spirituality of the thing. So. Mm. I... Amen. It, it, it goes on to say, don't allow him to come and go as he please. All right. <laughs> Your life depends on it. Mm. Verse 31, when Judas was gone, when he left, Jesus said, now is the son of man glorified and God is glorified in him. What we have to understand about this verse, once the house was clean, uh -huh. then God could be glorified. Mm. If your praise carries a bunch of mess, it is nothing but a bunch of noise. All right now. <laughs> well, if your house is clean, yes. God can abide in your praise. Mm -hmm. Your healing, your deliverance, and yeah. all that other stuff can take place. All your right. house has to be clean. Amen. 34. Jesus said a new command. I give you love yeah. one another as I have loved you. 35, mm -hmm. roll right through this. By this, all men would know that you are my disciple. I'm telling you, your house has to be clean mm. for God to be glorified. Mm -hmm. So many times, and we don't judge, but if you carry all that mess and come in church and go to shouting and doing all that stuff, there ain't nothing but a bunch of mess and a bunch of noise. Pastor, look like you got something to say right there. I just said, come through here because the truth of the matter is what Jesus really was telling them right there is they going to know y'all by all this biblical stuff that they going to know you by the biblical knowledge. He said that that that's one thing he said, but they really going to know you by the love you have. Right you can quote scripture and oh, the term purple, but it means nothing if you ain't got the love of God in your heart. Mm -hmm. you can speak, listen, you can speak in tongues if you want to. Because mm -hmm. if, if you got that gift, he gives gifts without repentance. But if Repent. you ain't got no love, mm -hmm. if you ain't got no love in your heart, it don't mean a, a hill of beans. And I think I keep saying this. God is speaking to us. I'm, I promise you, in this pandemic, these Sunday school lessons, even though it's the same scriptures every year. But I think in the pandemic, God has spoke very clear to us. And I think what he's trying to tell us is, is that when you trans, as we transition back into that corporate place, love is the main ingredient. Love. They can have all this other stuff, mm. suits, hats, robes, whatever. That's from the pulpit to the back door. But if you ain't got the love, mm. you, Amen. you can be a scholar or a theologian, as they say in the scripture. Mm -hmm. But if you ain't got the love of God, the God be love. Mm -hmm. It don't mean a hill of beans. No. You can be anointed and on your way to hell. 
That's what I'm saying. Well, hey, hey. Yes, so, you know, we try to keep this lesson under 30 minutes, so I'm almost there. I'm actually there. So I'm going to close with this. I want to I want to share my clothes in peace to this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All in these scriptures, Jesus was teaching that serving and love was the principles by which he taught and preached. He even mm -hmm. showed us how to love our enemies. Okay. He yeah. showed us darkness in the midst of light. Showing us that love never fails. Mm -hmm. Even as far as to tell us that washing feet wasn't beneath any of us. All right. Serving mm -hmm. was a part of the kingdom. Yes. Yes. We are a very proud and egotistical people. It has become normal for people to uh -huh. praise themselves, to praise themselves, to put themselves first. Pride has become a virtue. Now humility is considered weak. Mm. Yeah. It wants to be recognized as someone important. Mm -hmm. Apparently, this behavior has found its way into the church. Understand Amen. Amen. Jesus washed feet to show us that our pride has no place in his kingdom. All right. Let us love, serve, be humble soldiers. Okay. For the kingdom of God, because the kingdom of God is near. I'm done. I'm That's done. Hey, I'm done. We're going to pray and we're going to get out of here. Anybody got anything right, right there? Bro, the lesson was just good. Now we just can't help you. We can't help you. That's right. Amen. This was some good stuff. This was some good yes. food right here. Yes, it and, was. And, and if we, and you, you said something that was very key when you said, God is getting us prepared back mm -hmm. for the transition into the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Because oh, he, God has took his time and cleaned the sanctuary. He cleaned it. So the sanctuary oh. has oh. been prepared. <laughs> but he wants the church to get prepared now. All right. He wants our mm -hmm. hearts and our spirits. Oh. He wants mm -hmm. all that old mess we had in us when we was in his sanctuary to mm -hmm. be taken out of us. Oh, yeah. And the number one thing he keeps saying to us, like Pastor said, love. Love. love has more power than we mm -hmm. give it credit for. Yes, we we, we careful to say, well, he don't love me, so I don't love him. I don't care if he don't love me. I love him anyway. Anyway, <laughs> that's the key for you to get to heaven. You got to be able to love everybody. Because I can remember mm -hmm. the time my sister's on here. She can testify. I ain't love nobody. I couldn't stand nobody. I ain't want nobody <laughs> to say nothing to me. I, I ain't want to be around nobody. I mean, I'm still an introvert, but then I was really introvert. Don't say nothing to me. I was being hateful and yes, everything. Yes, she was, honey. Yes, I, she was. Uh, sure. <laughs> I, I, I can remember. I can remember when I was preaching in um somewhere in Maryland, and she introduced me. And um, when she said that, that that kind of humbled me. I was surprised she said all of that. Telling people how ugly I used to be before I preached, but <laughs> but when she said it, it kind of humbled me to to let mm. me know that I have allowed God to work on Thank me. Mm -hmm. God ain't gonna. He is a gentle man. If we don't want His humility, if we don't want His love, mm. if we don't want His grace, His peace, all of that to live on inside of us, then He's ain't He's not gonna push it on us. No force. We got right. to want the thing. And, and he wanted to know when he pushed us out, get out of my sanctuary. Y'all contaminate my sanctuary. When he pushed us out, he wanted to know now how bad do you want it? When you show me how bad you want it, I'll let the doors open back up. But until then, we're going to keep these doors closed until these people get right because my, my sanctuary will no longer be contaminated. When you come up in here, it's going to be miracles, signs, and wonders. We're going to be healed, cancer coming out of folks. How mm -hmm. blood pressure got to die, yeah, no sugar, beat, sugar diabetes got to die, lupus, mm -hmm. all that stuff got to mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. When we go back in that sanctuary, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, boy, it's going to be some stuff up in there. It's gonna, I'm, boy, I'm excited. Let me hush. Don't mm -hmm. get on the organ. We can really have to <laughs> Amen. All right. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Anybody else? We're going to close. Beautiful. Beautiful. It was, and I just, I just happened to think about um, First Corinthians thirteen chapter, where it says, um, like the pastor says, though I speak with tongues of men and angels, and have not love, I become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. 
So we got Let's to see. get it together. We got to get it together. John, you did an excellent job. Everybody's wonderful. comments were out of this world, wonderful, uplifting. Um, God is good. God is good. And I just say amen, amen to all of it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Brother, I really enjoyed your Sunday school lesson. Amen. 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 Pastor, would you lead us in prayer? Pastor, yes, sir. Okay. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise this morning. We give you glory. We yes. give you honor. We thank you, God, for this wonderful yes. lesson. Thank God, you, we Lord. thank you thank for you. showing us what true servanthood and true love is. Oh, God, we thank you for leading, God, and being the example that you want us to be in the earth. And we pray today, God, that you will allow us to be that example that we've learned about today. God, don't allow us to just be hearers of this word, God, but let us be doers of this Amen. word. Let Amen. us live this word Amen. out, oh God. God, give us that love that when Amen. people see us, God, when people hear us, God, that they will hear and hear the love on the inside of us. And we pray, oh God, that as you use us to extend our hands to those that may be enemies of you, Mm -hmm. We pray, oh God, that they will receive God of you, God. We pray that they won't do as Judas did and take the bread and reject the salvation and reject the mercy that you're giving them. But God, we pray mm -hmm. that you will anoint us in such a way with your power and with your spirit and with love that yeah. men, women, boys and girls will uh, cry out unto you and to a place of repentance and true salvation. We thank you even now that mm -hmm. you're preparing us that when you open back up the doors of the church, God, not just that golden view, God, but nationwide, we yes. thank you that the yes. kingdom of God as a whole mm -hmm. will be better because mm -hmm. of this time of preparation, oh God. We thank you that you're thank downloading you, into mm -hmm. us and you're speaking mm -hmm. to us and restoring mm -hmm. into us everything that we need for the next move and the next mm -hmm. place. God, we thank you for our teacher today. Mm -hmm. We thank you, God, for how you anointed him to be able to yeah. take us into yes. this lesson and to give fresh revelation and insight, oh God. And mm -hmm. we pray God, that every teacher that shall follow mm -hmm. the rest of the month, we pray that you will anoint Connie. We pray that you will anoint yeah. Vicky. We pray that yeah. you will anoint Faith, that as they come to teach us this month, mm -hmm. that they will teach us with clarity, with fresh revelation, and with your anointing yes, and with yes, your yes, power. Yes, now, God, yes. as we leave today, we pray yes. that you'll be with us throughout this mm -hmm. day, God, giving us your peace, your grace, and your mercy, God. We thank you, hallelujah. Thank, thank, you, thank Lord. you, Jesus, mm -hmm. that your presence will be made manifest in us on today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.